Hey, uh, well, technically, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this morning's session. Uh, I'm the session chair. I'm Simon Burkett. I'm a senior consultant for digital transformation working for JISC. We have a stand upstairs. Do you come and visit us afterwards if you wish to? We've got two sessions uh, this morning. We've got our colleagues, Hu Yin and uh, John from Edge Hill and Nepo Nepali over from South Africa. So uh, 30 minutes each. We're going to do 20 minutes of presentation and then we'll do some Q&A afterwards. And then I'll, I'll, I'll give you a good indication that we're about to hand over. So I'm going to give you back that cue. Thank you very much. Super duper. We've got to be wide for sound for all the streaming. I'm hoping that people online can hear us because there's no way for us to check. Um, so um, I'm Puyin. I am uh, a PhD student at Lancaster University. I'm also a digital learning producer at St. Joseph Martin and a trustee at Walt, amongst other random things. And um, I'm John Brindle. I am also a PhD student at Lancaster University, and I am learning design manager at Edge Hill University, which is a teeny tiny university up in the northwest of England. And we're really big, so. Yeah, <laughs> we go. Um, so um, there's one other colleague of ours um, who can't be here with us today. That's Dr. Brett Blight, who is actually, um, in a sense, our boss. Yeah. In some way, Lancaster. So, so he's, he's the program director on the PhD that we're doing and also the director of the Centre of TEL at um, Lancaster, which is where this TEL researcher project began last year, February last year. Um, so we're just going to quickly tell you about the story behind the series, uh, which is a webinar series, by the way, I should have said, and um, how we sort of build a community of like-minded researchers off of the back of just me being nosy, really. So... It all started with being nosy. That was the honest truth. I had a supervision meeting with one of our supervisors and I just said to him, I said, Don, what did you do before you became a researcher? And then he told me, oh, I used to work with the NHS and I was a school teacher. And I said, wouldn't it be interesting if you were to talk to the audience, that is anyone who wants to become a researcher, anyone who's interested in someone's life story, their successes, their struggles, their inspiration, et cetera. Um, just to talk about your story. And it, it really just started with, with a casual conversation with, with um, Professor Don Passy, I should, I should say his full name. And I approached John, I said, do you want to run a series with me together? And he said, yes, it wasn't a marriage proposal, by the way, but it sounded <laughs> like that. And um, the rest is, is as we are. We're um, approaching almost the end of our second year now. It's a monthly webinar where we invite um, I, I, I'm reluctant to say established researchers because that wouldn't be fair, but researchers who have been around for a while, who has a story to tell, who have something to share with the community. Those are the kind of criteria that, that we, we base our invitations on. So we're going to tell you a little bit about some of the talks that have happened. But before then. Yeah, I, I want to talk, start with the idea of where people come from in terms of tell research and what we found in that. And actually, no surprise, but the, uh, as the people in this room probably know, your journey into TEL was probably extremely varied and I bet everybody has a different story. And it's the same with TEL research as well. We found massively varied between all our participants. Nobody has the same story to tell. And it's fantastic. And it's really interesting that we don't actually focus on the research. So we're not saying to them, tell us what your latest research papers on. We're saying to them, tell us about what makes you a researcher. What was your journey into research? How did you become a tell researcher uh, in this field? And uh, so some of, the, some of the examples are just, just great. You know, there's a couple of people who've been through the program. So we started off quite insular and, and just using people from Lancaster within the program. And it's since grown um, to lots of other different people who um, hold lots of different positions in lots of different places. And it's fascinating to find, you know, the people with anthropological backgrounds, there's people with pure computer science backgrounds, there's people with um, backgrounds in teaching. Um, and, and, and yeah, so it's really interesting to find those really varied journeys. So um, if you're thinking about getting into towel research or you're thinking about taking your first steps in, then you're probably not alone in thinking, oh, I don't feel like I fit, um, which leads us on to uh, our next little slide which you're going to talk about yeah the, so as the John was saying the journey isn't easy and um, I'm probably going to get into trouble for, for using this example but that session was recorded and it is on YouTube that is actually one of our first sessions by Dr. Black, uh, 
<laughs> I can't say then properly, Dr. Brett Blight. And he said to me, he was quite honest in the session by saying he grew up in a tiny village in the north of the country where everyone was racist and everyone was just, you know, the far right. And by going to university, save his ass, quite literally. Now he's very liberal. He's very kind of, you know, social justice kind of part of his, his blood, et cetera, et cetera. And he was quite honest by saying, you know, going to university, doing a PhD and now teaching terror research literally just changed life around by potentially being, you know, a, someone with a beginning with a T, that word, yeah. to now a well-established and well-respected um, tell scholar. And then we have Dr. Um, Kilmi Lee, who um, in her session really talked about the struggle that she's been through being a Korean woman in England, in the Western world, the struggle she come across, the kind of people, how people don't want to recognize her achievement because of what she is, quite frankly. And then we have other um, people like um, your ex-colleague, um, Dr. Um, Tunde, um, I, can, I, can, I, can, yeah. I can apologize, and um, talked about how, you know, being on the kind of researcher journey has made her realize her passion is on the kind of multimodal methodology, how she wants to engage with her research participant in different ways, rather than just doing the kind of typical research, uh, sorry, um, interview, which is fine. It's nothing wrong with just doing interviews, but she preferred a kind of more interactive sort of different mm. ways of, getting data, et cetera. Um, so I don't know if you want to give a few more examples of how people want to share their journeys. There's, I think, um, i trying to think now. We've had so many people, it's been really interesting. I, I really like Jane Secker's journey into it. I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. She shared her whole journey and how she was looking at something totally different and history and, and things like that. And then it became, it suddenly started looking at copyright and open practice and things like that. So what, what's really interesting through journeys is this idea of change as well, how people are transformed through their tell research journey that they actually, a lot of the time, what they start looking at in their research it changes totally and becomes something, something totally different. And nobody becomes a kind of one trick pony almost. Some people do, but not, not all of them. I'm not going to mention anything about threshold concepts. <laughs> So, Sorry, um, but, yeah, but, but one of the key <laughs> things is that people do like sharing their journey. So um, if you are looking at getting into tell research, which, you know, we're, we're very early into it. We're just about to move to thesis state. Well, we're, we're kind of getting to thesis stage now with our with our PhDs. People really love sharing with you. So if you are ever nervous about approaching people, we've had some people who we really admire um, come. We've got Bonnie. Bonnie Stewart, that Bonnie Stewart Dr. came Bonnie Stewart, in, in yeah, that's right. who we really admire, and we were like, and we, we and asked her, and she said, yeah, I'll, I'll come and talk. Um, we've got some really great people um, coming up in the next year who we just never thought would be, you know, people who really want to share their, their journey into research with us, and it's really interesting. So if you are worried, ever worried about approaching people about their research and about their journey, don't be, ask them. And nine times out of 10, they'll go, yeah, I don't think, have you had anyone say outright, no, I can't stand you? Um, yeah. Not Apart from me. <laughs> well, yeah, well, that, that, is, a, that is a well-established fact, yeah. isn't it? We don't like each other, so you know what I mean? You know, um, <laughs> no, I mean, everyone I've asked have been, who, me? But I'm a nobody. Well, but you are somebody, you published, you know, pages and pages of you know paper you've got your professor you've got all these big names after you you, you know of course you're somebody but me really that is normally the reaction I get from most people you want me to talk about my journey but I've got nothing I'm just boring well no you're not and um maybe you know it's, we could talk about the format as well so we don't prescribe a particular format in which um <clears throat> our guests need to talk about it the, the brief is quite open it's basically talk about your research practice, talk about you as a researcher. If you want a bit of guidance, if you want some prescribed questions, we have some questions to, to you can use, but it's not a requirement, which is why it's kind of quite interesting that, you know, like Brett, Brett talked about his journey kind of like chapter to chapter, like I said earlier, from going to university to, you know, um, now he's getting a bit older, how he kind of, you know, became a computer scientist to now a tell research, et cetera. Then we, we have... Um, Jan Saka, who did a mm -hmm. pop quiz with yeah. Guess the Songs. So she used songs to connect 
chapters of her life. And then we have um, <clears throat> um, Donna and Laurie who are both here today. Um, so do go ask them questions if you want to. Um, they basically interview each other and talked about their relationship, their collaboration, how they managed to keep each other sane after, I don't know, 20 years of working with each other. So it's just completely open. And it's, that's what makes the, 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 the project interesting, what John and my time doing, because we're not bored of it. We're never going to get bored of it because it's so many. I think, I think, I think what I've learned as well, though, is, is that people get a bit overwhelmed when you ask them to talk about their life. <clears throat> but once they've sat down and think about it, 10 out of 10 times so far, they have more to share than they perhaps give them so credits for. Um, <clears throat> so maybe we'll talk about the collaboration because I think this is a collaboration between us and them and also um, collaboration between the researchers themselves. Yeah, so collaboration is fun. We, we actually hosted a really good um, round table, which was uh, how not to kill your co-author um, with, with a few people who have co-authored together. And that was a really fun one because we found out a lot about some of the, some of the people <laughs> who published together. And actually the, the behaviors of people who co co-author, some people who say, well, what I'll do is I'll, you know, somebody will write it, I'll edit it and go through it and make adjustments and amendments. And that's how we'll co-author. And actually the approaches to co-authoring were so, so different. And there was some really fun stuff about deadlines. And there was a few jibed marks between Phil Moffat and Brett Bly. I'm going to name them online um, about, you know, we're going to get into a deadline. Anyway. A deadline, otherwise it's a guideline. I think was the was the barb that was there. Um, so it was really interesting finding out about how they how other authors collaborate, but also actually the collaboration between us as well. Um, and uh, we, we've got our next slide, which is about friendship as well and building friendship and and stuff. Yeah, through um, through this process has been absolutely brilliant. And actually, you know, we, we've collaborated with some great people on this project and yeah, uh, yeah. there's including some other people within within the cohort that are part of the PhD program as well so I could be, be remiss to not mention Francie and, and Tom as well yeah. um, who Puyin likes to mix me and Tom up because we're both white I did not it wasn't <laughs> me it was Francie who accidentally <laughs> called him Tom <laughs> lie one on, of the so, sessions so I yeah. edited that out so it wasn't me <laughs> So uh, it's quite funny. We, we've had we've had, we have plenty of plenty of fun uh, in creating this and, and collaborating over it as well. Um, but it is difficult, and, and we find you know sometimes um, it you know it's very time consuming for Puyin because she does a lot of the editing and and social media, and he does nothing. I, 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 I take the <laughs> I take the, the white colonial view, and I just sit back and let her do all the work. Um, so it's um, but actually you know when we're collaborating with the, with the people who are speaking as well, we do you know. We ensure that we're, we're making markers so that you can have chapter markers when it goes onto YouTube. So all of them are available on the CTEL YouTube channel as well, all the talks where the author have given their consent to be put on there. Um, but it's really it's really interesting to collaborate on projects like this. And again, the, the, the kind of whole thing for you if, you, if you're thinking of doing something similar where you're thinking of doing, just think about who you're going to collaborate with and, and build that relationship. We've got, I think we've got an all right relationship now. Uh, I mean, yeah. Uh, so it's uh, so we gave me a lift this morning. Yeah, so I, I picked her up from the station this morning. So I'm just be feeling okay. Um, so on that that note, we just want to say, you know, friendship's great. Yeah. Making lots of friends through this, people who we would never have met before, yeah. and people who we would never have in, interacted with or never come across. And they're becoming friends and colleagues, and and we're, we're talking to them and able to to kind of just say, you know kind of have a bit of help with this now and yeah. again one of the things that I'd always say about um being part of a research community is to say you know not be afraid of asking for help from people we've just recorded a radio show for Thursday morning about yeah. our research about our views on our research and our journeys yeah and uh you know that again the key thing is asking people for help and saying you know oh actually and and so Anytime, contact me, or I'm going to say anytime, contact you. I should have said anytime, just contact me. Anytime, contact my PA, and he'll, <laughs> fil he'll fil filter your calls and inquiries, and I'll decide who to respond. I'm joking. I think, I think, I think on the friendship note as well, though. I think you know we obviously knew of each other, mm -hmm. but I don't think we would never have been that close no. without this project. And and the friendship extends to. I'm not naming them. If you want to identify yourself, you can do. Is people in this room I've never met. They would never have come to Lancaster to embark on a doctorate study journey if this wasn't 
for the uh, the, the community that, that the series has built as a result. And it wasn't the intention when when we started the series. February last year, we really just thought it was going to be, you know, two or three months and it would just fade away and it'd be forgotten. We never thought we're going to have so many um, sort of schedule at the moment. It goes all the way to June next year. And I've still got a whole list of people I'm gonna, just going to bother. I'm just kind of like thinking, when am I going to just take a deep breath and, and just go ask? Because it's quite nerve wracking to go and ask those big people. But as I said earlier, nine out of 10 times, they say, yeah, of course. Of course, I'll talk about it. So um, on that note, I'm just going to name drop the people who have appeared on our um, series. Um, most of them don't need introductions, I don't think. Um, but um, if you want to review the, uh, record, uh, the, the, sessions, the recording of the session, it is available. And the link will be available at the, at the last night, uh, slide. And, um, and um, now it's time to review who's going to come next because yeah. we took a long summer break, but we're back in September, later this month, and we've got um, Dr. Melissa Hyten. She might appear later on in this conference, I'm not sure. And then we've got Peter Bryan, who's around somewhere, and um, all these amazing people. And I just want to say at this stage as well, though, we have expanded our, um, not just tell researchers anymore, because we kind of realised that tell research, actually research, there's a loads of, there's loads of overlap and often these people don't really categorize themselves in one particular field because it's so, so narrow so we kind of like we haven't changed the name of our project is still tell researchers but we are inviting uh researchers who work broadly in HG field so um if anyone's got any people they really admire and they want to invite um, but you feel a bit shy or you don't have a channel to do that, give us a shout and we'll see what we can do, yeah. basically. Because I think um, just to end this, one thing uh, we haven't mentioned is, for me anyway, I don't know about you, but I always thought research was has to be closed up to keep everything you know close to my chest and I can't show people my work because otherwise people are going to steal my ideas. This happens, but I think through this series, through the generosity mm -hmm. and the openness of all the people who have spoken and you're going to talk at the series the one consistent um thing about these people is the openness and it, it, it's the open practice and I, I was saying to you do you remember um uh earlier this year and I said oh we're in May now I didn't realize all the people we invited um so if you look at um this year all these people were invited they actually practice um, open educational practice I didn't realize until They've all spoken and I realize actually that's a theme going on subconsciously through our minds. Isn't that right, John? And I think yeah. in both our um, work now, we've got uh, like an open practice yeah. element to it. It might not be the kind of the big banner, but it is somewhere in both our yeah. work, isn't it? And I think that's so, what's been quite encouraging about a lot of the people that we've spoken to is that a lot of people really believe in open practice. And it's quite magical to see that as such so prevalent within the some of the researchers that we've uh, we've spoken to and that's certainly been a way that I've kind of been a bit more transformed by that by thinking about uh, open practice more seriously um yeah. so I was quite closed <laughs> before that um uh yeah and so I think, I'll, I'll be honest about that that's fine and I think some of <laughs> our some of our speakers have kind of made a, the, the 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 kind of, they kept their doors open to say if you guys need any help talk about your work like Bonnie still was really honest to me after she sent an email to me say oh that was really fun if anytime you need any help, just give me a shout. And I think we're gonna, we're gonna take some up on the office. Because I think it got to the stage where we're both shameless, aren't we? Really? Shameless now, so there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, just to um, uh, end the presentation, if you want to learn more about the series, watch the recordings, see who's coming up, that's the website that'll link you to everything that we have. Um, as I said, anyone you want to invite via the series, just drop me a, an email and uh, we'll... We'll take it from there. So yeah, perfect. Yeah. Has anyone got any questions? Because we we have time for questions, yeah, don't we? Oh great. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we've got we've got hand up. <laughs> yeah. Well you talked about friendship, which is great. And I know you both have also part of our thing, which uh, actually they need to the mic, don't they? Now all these guests, how are the other researchers in Lancaster and others who are attending? gaining from it from are they like are you seeing other collaborations 
outside. I mean, upload is, I know, one thing, but are you seeing any other impact from this friendship developing? Um, we've all been speakers, also the other researchers. I think it's just a thrust on a personal level. We 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 talk yeah. to each other most days, don't we? Yeah, yeah. On on sort of like how we're getting on with with our research, and I think it mm -hmm. wouldn't have been that possible. I mean, it would have been possible because yeah. we we work in the same cohort. But but I think, like I said, the series really brought us closer together. In terms of with the speakers, I think we have. Actually, I made a joke with um, Alice, who is our um, uh, admission person for the for the for the for the program. I said, "Well, you're going to have to start paying the commission because because <laughs> because through the series, I mean, I, I'm not taking note of any of them. Through the series, I think we have Aircrow recruited four or five students onto the Lancaster program. So the series is doing things." not really genuine income for the university. I don't care because I don't get paid from them. Um, but it's to kind of encourage people to take a research. And to answer your question in terms of collaboration, I don't know because we've tried to get feedback from people um, after the session. But as you all know, we all work in similar fields. Getting feedback from people after any session is incredibly <laughs> difficult. So that's something we're, we're working on. Um, we need to do better on yeah. that. I think we're aware of that, yeah. but it's it's hard because you can't just pin someone down and say, "Tell me what you think about a session. You know. So, um, yeah. I thought, I know who I want to examine my thesis, <laughs> and she did. And when I saw Sue Cranley's presentation, and she talked about her work at Lancaster and how well she got on with her colleagues, I thought, I'm going to apply for that job, and I did, and I got it. Yeah, that's a whole doctorate in itself, measuring the impact. Of the We're sending an invoice after today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you my trip. <laughs> there you go. It's perfect. It's, it's people like yourself and other attendees. Sometimes they will email me to say, thanks, it's been great, we've been inspired. Or sometimes um, before Twitter was still a thing, it's still a thing in a way that we sometimes we get people we're tweeting our session to say, it's been great, I'm now going to do this and that. So we have like little nuggets of, of impact, but as I said, it's, it's incredibly hard to kind of formally measure them because, it, as I said earlier, it just... It just you send someone a questionnaire, they fill it out, they don't fill it out, you can't really force them. So um I'm asking is if you ever gonna attend our sessions, give some feedback, please. Any <laughs> <laughs> so, more questions? Okay, yes. There's some, there some lovely terms there about stories to tell, generosity of sharing and journeys and all those sorts of things. And I just wonder from all the people that you've interviewed, what one thing have you taken away in your own practice from the people you've interviewed that you can look at? Life is hard. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the one thing that I personally took away taken away from it is that you look at all these big names, you think they've got it good. Yes, but it's 20, 30, 40 years worth of hard work. And I think um with Laurie in his session, he was saying he started doing research as going down the sewer and just measuring, you know. The brand stuff and <laughs> now he then became a time researcher i can't remember exactly what he said but but it's it's you, you have to you think those people just have it on the plate handed to them they don't it's really a lot of you know rejection a lot of struggles a lot of let's say, let's say earlier you know kill me lee he, he, he keeps getting rejected because of what she is let's be frank about it and then you got sue kramer who was saying you know um when she transitioned from uh, an administrator to a research um associate or some some kind at ucl people still saw her as a little admin lady you know typing away in an office and she just had to leave the environment to start afresh to establish her research identity so i think the one thing for me to, to take away is that it's hard but when, once you get there it's worth it so i don't know about i think again i think i alluded to this before is the openness and the fact that you know it's we're really lucky that these people openly share their stories with everybody 
um, and that we can do it in a very open way. And one of the key things is there's no financial imperative for anybody in any of this, apart from no. Lancaster University's programs. Um, but, <laughs> but, but the, um, but the um, I just said that on mic as well, haven't I? <laughs> but the um, but the the actual you know the, there's no financial imperative for any of the the research researchers who talk to us we're not making any money from it and we, nobody we has do. ever <laughs> asked us to pay them at all no one has ever asked yeah. us well i'll do a talk but it's 200 quid for half an hour whatever no one has ever they literally just go like who me yeah of course what do you want to talk about and then we have a little conversation with them and then you know some some of them produce like 20 slides or whatever you know that's hours of their work but they, they, it's like you know we're keeping yes. for the point of the generosity of the people and that's it and, and the fact back. that there is there is a rich community of tell research out there massive i mean this conference is yeah. testament to it but yeah don't be afraid to reach out to people yeah is there what a great note to finish on so i'd just like to thank uh, puyan and john for their presentation thank you very much